What has happened to Tesla stock? I'm recording this on Thursday. Shares are down about 4% today. They're down about 14% over the past month. And Tesla shares are down well over 50% from their peak at over $400 per share. The market cap is even close to falling under $500 billion. It seems like all the momentum is negative in Tesla right now. And I think there's honestly a really good reason. And this has been the operational trends that we have seen over the last 12 to 15 months. Tesla has not proven to be the company that we thought it maybe was in 2020 and 2021, where gross margins were in excess of 25%, where the company was growing revenue at 50%, where Elon Musk talked about long-term there being a 50% compound annual growth rate for Tesla. That is not what has happened. And now the company is in a slide, not only from a revenue perspective, but also a margin perspective. And it's not really clear when that's gonna end, especially with the competitive environment, not only in the US, but particularly in China, where Tesla has its lowest cost and highest margin manufacturing facility. So I'm gonna dig through some of the trends today and why Tesla might potentially still be very, very overvalued. My name's Travis Hoyam. Thanks for watching Asymmetric Investing. Please subscribe here on YouTube for all my content and thanks to this video sponsor, The Motley Fool. If you go to fool.com slash ASYM, they'll give you their top 10 stocks to buy right now. So I wanna start just with the stock trends. Now this is from Google. You can see that over the past month, shares are down about 14.2% year to date, down almost 35%. And if you go back to five years ago, this was before this pop in shares in 2019 and 2020 has continued to hold, but shares have really gone downhill really since the end of 2020. So very different company now than it was then, but the operating trends really tell the story of what's going on with Tesla. I'm gonna start with a look at revenue because I think this is really what's important to understand. If you are gonna pay a premium for Tesla stock, this has to be a growth company. And right now, Tesla is not growing. It's not growing very much at all. Yes, over the past few years, the compound annual growth rate that you see in this chart is 43%. But look at the last three quarters and look at the trailing off of revenue growth. And then we can look at some of management's comments in the most recent quarter. I think this one was really the most telling. A questioner brought up the 50% compound annual growth rate that Tesla itself has talked about and whether that was going to be able to be happening in 2024 or 2025. And the CFO basically blew off the question, said we're between two major growth waves, waves that would be the Model 3 and Model Y, which happened late in the 2010s. And the next growth wave will be the next generation platform. That's supposed to be a vehicle that's somewhere around $25,000 from a starting point. On top of that, Elon Musk added earlier that Tesla's next wave would be driven by not only this next generation vehicle, but also energy storage, full self-driving, and what he just says is other projects. And those are what need to be executed really well for the company to ultimately live up to its potential, both from a revenue and from a margin perspective. But I think there's reason to question a lot of those things, especially given the trends that we've seen recently. One is that, yes, this next generation platform is really going to be important for Tesla, but what they continue to do is keep moving down the cost curve. They started with the Model S and Model X. Those were vehicles that can be in excess of $100,000, very high margin, and that's going to be the kind of margins that you expect from high-end companies. Ferrari, even BMW have very high margins because they have very high cost vehicles. They also have relatively low volumes as a result. But once you start to increase your volumes, now you have to move down on the price curve. And that's what Tesla did with the Model 3 and Model Y. But what happened to operations as those products scaled? You can see here that profitability began to decline. I'll start with margins. And you can see that margins have been in decline since the middle of 2022. Now, I started on this channel talking about Tesla's margins in December 2022 because that's when they started discounting vehicles in anticipation with the vehicle tax credit that was going to change in early 2023. That proved to be a canary in the coal mine for Tesla. They continued to reduce prices throughout 2023 and that has continued into 2024. The news recently was that Tesla reduced prices or gave incentives of as much as $5,000 in China in response to BYD and other competitors lowering their prices. For some context, BYD has a vehicle they sell for less than $10,000. Tesla's manufacturing costs are in excess of $35,000 on average per vehicle. So this is really a price war that is happening, particularly in China, 
but then that ultimately gets exported around the world. And this is really the risk for manufacturing companies. And I wanna make no mistake about this, Tesla is a manufacturing company. Investors have been valuing this as a tech company for a very long time, but Tesla is investing billions of dollars in building manufacturing plants and their economics are driven by the supply and demand of the products coming out of those manufacturing plants. That is a manufacturing company. So as supply of electric vehicles have gone up, as competition has increased, as both Tesla, along with every other company in the EV space has increased what they're making, they've had to all lower prices to be able to attract customers. There's plenty of evidence that Tesla wouldn't be lowering prices if it wasn't for competitive pressure. And the best case for that is during the pandemic when a lot of US manufacturers in particular canceled their chip orders and basically screwed up their supply chains and weren't able to deliver vehicles that people wanted during the pandemic. Tesla didn't make those same mistakes. They had plenty of vehicles. And so they were the ones that had more demand than supply. What did they do in that case? They increased prices, increased prices in 2020, 2021, but that started to reverse in 2022 as supply started to come onto the market, not only in the ice market, but also for electric vehicles as well. That's when margins started to go down. Now you're starting to see things normalize. And Tesla's margins are really between those high-end companies like BMW and the more traditional automakers like GM and Ford, but they're definitely not at a premium gross margin or a premium operating margin. And you can see that this chart here shows as the Model 3 and Model Y scaled, you started to see gross profit fall as well. So this is not what you wanna see for a company that is increasing their production, their gross profit actually falling. But that's exactly what we see from Tesla. And this is what investors are processing right now is how far can their gross profit fall, both for on a percentage basis and then also on a dollar basis because both of those two things are in decline right now. Thanks to our friends at The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash ASYM for the top 10 stocks to buy right now. Now, the problem is there's not really any catalysts that are going to change things for Tesla in 2024 and potentially even in 2025. The next generation vehicle doesn't appear to be ready yet. We haven't seen anything yet. And Tesla typically doesn't deliver these things on time. So I wouldn't expect to see a next gen vehicle until at least 2026. Cybertruck doesn't seem to be the kind of product that is going to be meaningfully impact their revenue or margins in 2024. I don't think there's a ton of demand for that vehicle. And so what you have is hope for the future. But like I said, as you're starting to move down market and moving to lower cost vehicles, that typically comes with lower margins because there's more competitive price pressures. It also comes with higher costs. This is a little bit counterintuitive, but lower price vehicles come with higher customer demands. Think about something like a Toyota Corolla. People buy those vehicles because they're extremely rot reliable. They don't have to go into the shop all the time. If you have ever seen or know somebody who owns a very expensive vehicle, Aston Martin, even BMW, they're regularly in the shop. So you're paying more money for a vehicle that is less reliable. That's exactly what customers expect. They expect those low cost vehicles to be more reliable. And so that starts to become a challenge for Tesla building out more and more service centers to provide the maintenance needed if they're going to increase their supply at that same rate. But then all the other products are really unproven. I know that energy storage has grown really well, but that's fundamentally a commodity product. That is batteries going into the field, particularly sold to utilities. That is not the kind of business that's going to be really high margin long-term. We have just never seen any energy products like that be a high margin business because someone else, particularly Tesla's battery manufacturing partners are going to ultimately enter that, enter that market and squeeze out margins. This is exactly what we've seen in industries like wind and solar. The manufacturing companies just aren't able to generate a profit long-term because those prices continue to come down year after year. The other hope is something like FSD, full self-driving. Well, it seems like version 12 is a right a step in the right direction, but FSD is nowhere near the point where there's gonna be a meaningful imp impact on Tesla's financials, in part because it's not approved for level three, level four, or level five autonomy in the US or anywhere else around the world. Elon Musk talked about this. The US has some of the most lax rules around full self-driving, and that's why they're doing a lot of their testing here, but that doesn't mean that they can sell a product that can actually allow the vehicle to drive itself without doing potentially years of testing and reporting. And we haven't gotten anywhere near that from Tesla. State of California is the state that has the best reporting around this. And Tesla doesn't do any self-driving, doesn't do any testing or reporting on how many interventions there are. 
what happens in an accident, all of that liability falls on the actual user. So how big is that market? If FSD is just a really advanced cruise control and you still have to watch the, and you still have to watch the road, I don't know that that's a really big market. So again, you're adding uncertainty to the future. Maybe that will be a big business, but is that worth paying premium for a company like Tesla? I think the answer right now is no. So a lot of these growth avenues for Tesla are a lot of potential, but you're paying for that potential. And that's where you get to the valuation of the stock. And this is why shares are pulling back right now. Remember I talked about margins are on the decline and this is no longer a growth company. That, those two things are clear in the financial results but Tesla shares are still trading at a massive premium to its peers. Now I'm not arguing that it shouldn't trade at a premium to peers, but it's trading at a about a 10 X premium to peers. Price to earnings multiple right now is 39 on a trailing basis on a forward basis. This is based on analyst estimates for 2024. The price to earnings multiple is 54. So what that tells you is that analysts think that earnings are going to fall in 2024. What are competitors trading for? GM, Ford are going to be trading for more like four, five, six times earnings. So Tesla is trading for about 10 times the earnings multiple as those competitors. Price to sales, Tesla is trading for 5.4 on a trailing basis and on a forward basis, 4.8. What are competitors trading for? About 0.3. So Tesla's stock, Tesla's valuation would have to fall by more than 90% to trade at the same price to earnings multiple as some of its bigger peers. I'm not predicting that kind of a drop is gonna happen, but what I think is pretty clear is that Tesla is in a much more difficult operating environment than it's been at any point in its history as a public company. It has always had far more demand than it had supply, but now it's having to live by the, the rules of supply and demand. And that's something that the market is figuring out now, and it doesn't like what the future looks like as a result. So that's why shares are down. This isn't all that surprising to me because these are trends that we have seen happening over the last 12 to 18 months. Margins are falling. Competition is getting better and is taking market share from Tesla. And those trends are not good, especially when the value of the company is based on a massive growth rate that just hasn't materialized. So when we look at this company through clear eyes, I think it's still very, very overvalued, could potentially fall 50, 75% more. And only then you would get to a pretty reasonable multiple, multiple compared to a lot of its competitors. But what do you think about Tesla? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to Asymmetric Investing. Thanks for watching everybody. See you here next time.